Hey guys, today we're going to be doing animation state machines so that we can utilize animation blending within the state machines and seamlessly or mostly seamlessly go from one animation into another. So I've already imported a skeletal mesh and I brought in a couple animations from Mixamo.com. And what I'm going to do first is make a new folder for blueprints. And then I'm going to go ahead and add an animation blueprint. And we'll be using our zombie skeletal mesh today. So animation blueprint, zombie blending. All right, great. So we're gonna open this up. And usually if you followed other tutorials, we do a lot of live streaming. So maybe this would be the OptiTrack but today we are going to do a new state machine. And our state machine is not set up, so it's gonna throw a warning. So if we double click in our state machine, we start with an entry pin. The first action, our default action, I wanna use an idle. So I'm going to add a state and we'll call this state idle. Oh, spell it right. And to make it idle, we're going to have it play the idle animation. Then, so we can blend seamlessly between different animations, what we want to do is add a conduit. A conduit is going to allow us to go from all of our different animations into any other animation. So we'll add a state. And I believe one of the animations is called agony. So we'll have play agony. And then we have, I believe we have stumble backwards. And we'll do play stumble backwards. And what else do we have? Uh, look behind and Samba dancing. All right, so add state running. And Samba dancing. All right. So now we have all of our states set up, but we need to set up these transitions. So I want to be able to go from agony to running to samba to idle to stumble backwards in any order I want. So the first thing is these need to be bi-directional relationships. So we're going to add some more arrows. Trick is to start in that gray border where it does not work and to start from the correct node. Okay, great, so now I have these bi-directional relationships, but I need to specify when it's gonna to go to agony, when it's gonna to go to stumble backwards, when it's going to go to running. And to do this, we're going to use a data type called an enumeration. This is found in lots of programming languages and we use it in Unreal as well. So I'm actually going to create this enumeration under blueprints enums actions and we'll call this actions and enums is just a list of different states the computer is going to just read this as a list of numbers but we're going to give this a more human readable name and list out all of our different actions so we have agony uh, stumble backwards so I can give these names anything I want but it will just make my life easier if they match my states because I'll remember them. Uh, Samba and running. Great. And then we're going to bring that into our animation blueprint. So under variables, we look under, I think I call this actions, enum actions. There we go. And we'll call this actions. Great. So going into agony. I only want to do this 
if actions equals agony. So I'm only going to enter the agony animation if that's what this enum equals. So same here. I'm only going to enter the stumble backwards animation if my actions enum equals stumble backwards. And we'll set that up for the rest of them. Oh, that's running. And we're going to have a warning right now because we haven't finished our state machine. So don't worry about it. We will finish this. Again, our zombie is going to stay in this idle animation if and only if our actions enum equals idle. OK, great. So now if we're going to leave agony, that means we're going into a different animation. And that's where we're going to hit this Boolean or this logic check. So just to leave the animation, we don't need any additional logic checks. So if we want to leave the animation, we're not going to stop it. So we're just going to say, that's fine. If you want to leave, I'm not going to stop you. But if you want to start a new animation, that's where that logic we just set up is going to come into play. So now if we compile, So now we have actions, and if we're just editing the preview, we can go ahead and switch them. Falls backwards, idle, samba. You'll notice these transitions are very quick. So in the blend settings, the duration of that transition is 0.2 seconds. So if we give it something like 10 seconds, and we'll start at idle, and then go to samba. Oh, that was still very quick. Oh, compile. There we go. So we're in agony, we go to Samba. That's much smoother. So let's go ahead and do that for all of these. So you and you and you and you. So we're gonna make all of these 10 second transitions. So I can go from agony, falling backwards to idle. And these are not perfect blends by any means. But if you do need some blending, your motion capture came out a little funny. You forgot to have some sort of A pose or idle in between everything. This is a really nice way to handle that. This is also great for more interactive pieces where you want to give the audience control of when a character is going to be doing certain animations. This is a great way of setting that up. So we've been able to switch it in our preview window, but now we need to be able to change these animations in our world. So we can close this and we're gonna bring this animation into our world. And there he is doing agony, cause that's our default. So if I opened up that animation blueprint and I edit defaults, we switch this to idle. Now they'll start an idle. I kind of like that better. Okay, so we need a way of changing our enumeration or this actions. We need a way to be able to change this. So let's open up our level blueprint and let's select our zombie. And I'm gonna create a reference to our zombie and we wanna get the animation instance. From here, we're gonna cast it back into a animation blueprint zombie. And the reason we're doing this is it gives us access to our actions variable. So I can go ahead and set actions. And now I can set which animation I want our avatar or I want our zombie to do. So now all I have to do is put this on a key press. So I'm going to save 
this variable here, make this a local variable. Let's call this um, selected action. Great. And let's set up um, some key presses. So on key press one, I'll keep it at idle. All right. And then once I set it, I'll change it. And I'll just do that five times. All right, so I'll do this on two. And you'll be agony on three. You can be stumbled backwards on four. This can be Samba, and that leaves five to be running. And we'll just link this up. Oops. And one, two, three, four, and five. All right, there we go. So we grabbed our animation uh, animation blueprint with the zombie. We're getting that animation instance out so we can cast it to this class type, which allows us to set our action variable, which was how we were able to change our different animations. And we made our actions in enum into our own local variable. And then we're just setting our local variable with key presses, which is then triggering this change in our animation blueprint. So let's see if that actually works. So I'm gonna hit play, it's gonna be an idle. And if I hit two, there we go, we have agony. Three, it's falling. Four, a samba. Falling was so much fun, I'm gonna do it one more time. So I hit three, if I hit four, back to samba. Five, is that run. And if I hit one, it goes back to idle. All right, I'll hit the escape key, and that is it. That is how you can set up an animation state machine and use key presses to utilize animation blending and switch between different animation assets. All right, hope that was helpful and you enjoyed.